Not all email accounts will have such an easy setup as the Gmail account. Once you set up your first account on the phone, to add additional accounts, open the Settings menu. Select the Mail, Contacts, Calendars option. From this menu, select Add Account, and it will take you to the same screen as before. When adding an account for a server not listed, tap on the Other option. This screen will give you the option to add an email account, as well as a contact and calendar synchronizations. Contact and calendar synchronizations are commonly used in big companies. If you are looking to add a corporate contact or calendar synchronization, contact your employer's IT department. Tapping on the Add Mail Account option will take you back to this page. Again, enter the information for your email account, and when you've finished entering the information, tap on Next. The iPhone will look up your account and, if possible, will automatically fill in the correct server information. If the device cannot access this information automatically, you will have to enter it manually. From this screen, select whether it is an IMAP or POP account. The information you entered in the previous screen has been carried over to this one. Enter the information for the incoming and outgoing mail servers. This information can be obtained from your email service provider or employee's IT department. Once you have entered both sets of information, tap on the Save button. The device will verify the information, and if it is all correct, will take you back to the Mail Contacts Calendar Settings menu. As you can see, the original Gmail account, and now the new Work account, are shown in the Accounts list. When you have multiple accounts on your iPhone, you will have a few extra options for inbox management. Tap on the Mailboxes icon in the top left corner. From here, you can see your individual inboxes and accounts, as well as any unread messages. Tapping on All Inboxes will take you to a universal inbox, displaying emails from all of your accounts synced with the phone. Clicking on an individual account will show an inbox specific to only that account. Clicking on one of the accounts in the Accounts list will take you to a folder tree displaying folders such as Drafts, Sent, and Inbox. Opening your inbox, in the bottom left corner is the refresh icon. Tapping on this will automatically check for any new emails. Opposite of the refresh icon is the Compose Mail option. When you tap this icon, it will launch a blank emailed message. The first information you should enter is the To field. If the contact you want to send a message to is stored in your contact list with their email address, tapping on the blue plus icon will display your phone book and you can select them directly from it. You're also able to start typing in the contact name or email address and the phone will display a list of matches. Tapping on any of these matches will immediately add the contact to the email. You are also able to choose what email address to send the message from if you have multiple addresses synced to your phone. Here I'm selecting to send it from mczdemo2010 at mobileconcepts.com versus mczdemo2010 at gmail.com. Enter your subject in the subject line and tapping in a blank area in the message body, you can begin typing your message. Your signature is automatically added to the end of your email. By default, it will say, sent from my iPhone. We'll discuss the signature later. Once you've entered all the information for your email, tap send and your message will be sent. You can track the status of your sent message here. To open a message, Simply tap on the message preview. When you've opened the message, along the bottom three additional icons will appear. This icon will open the folder tree and you'll be able to move the email to a different folder. To move between accounts, 
tap on the accounts icon in the top left corner. Tapping the icon in the center will let you archive the message, removing it from the iPhone's inbox, but not the actual inbox you would view from your computer. The last new icon gives you the option to reply to or forward the email. Tapping on the All Inboxes icon will return you to your inbox, and from here, tapping the Edit icon lets you quickly archive or move multiple messages. To access the settings for your different email accounts, open the Settings menu and select Mail, Contacts, and Calendars. Here, as before, your email accounts are listed together at the top of the page. Tapping on the Fetch New Data option, you can choose whether you want your email to be pushed directly to your phone or have the phone check at specific intervals. If you choose manually, the phone will only fetch email when you hit the refresh button I showed you earlier. This list of settings is for your inbox. You can sift through these and change any of them to your liking. One I would definitely recommend enabling is the Ask Before Deleting option. This will prompt you to confirm your delete prior to removing any emails. This next grouping of settings is for composed messages. Here's where you can find the signature option. Tapping on this, you're able to create a custom signature. If you would prefer to not have a signature, tap on the clear icon in the top right or leave the field blank. If you've imported contact lists or calendars from your email or other servers, you can find options for them at the bottom of this list, including sort orders and alerts. It may be necessary for you to eventually remove an email account from your device. To do so, open the Settings menu. Then open Mail, Contacts, and Calendars. Select the account you want to delete from the top of the page, and from this window, select Delete Account. The device will confirm you want to delete the account, which will remove its mail, notes, and calendars. Tap Delete Account to confirm, and the iPhone will take care of the rest. You're able to download the Facebook application, which lets you quickly access and update your Facebook from the phone. The first time you open the application, you will have to log in. Enter your information and press Go. During the initial login, Facebook will ask you if you want to allow push notifications. This synchronization can notify you about Facebook messages, posts, and more. Once you have logged in, the device will remember your information and immediately launch your profile as shown here. As you can see, we still don't have any posts. Maybe someday. <sighs> Tapping on the grid of nine squares brings you to this page. Along the top, you can access your account options, add favorites, search for friends or businesses, access any of these main Facebook functions, and check your notifications. The iPhone 4 comes with Wi-Fi standard. To access Wi-Fi, open your settings menu. Tap on the Wi-Fi option, and here you can enable or disable Wi-Fi. When Wi-Fi has been enabled, a list of available networks will appear. To join a network, tap on it. If necessary, enter the network's key. This can often be found on the router 
or by contacting the network administrator. Once you've entered the key, tap on Join. The check mark to the left shows that you've successfully joined the network. Now when you activate Wi-Fi and are within range of the network, it will automatically connect. If you do not want your device to automatically connect to the network when in range, tap on the blue arrow and tap on Forget This Network. Then Confirm. You can also obtain additional information about the network on this screen. To access the settings for Bluetooth on your phone, open the Settings menu. Scroll down until you find the General Settings option. In here, you'll find Bluetooth options. From this screen, you can enable or disable Bluetooth and, as with Wi-Fi, when Bluetooth is enabled, it will automatically search for available devices. When you find the device you want to pair with, tap on its name. The iPhone will attempt to pair with the device and, if required, enter the PIN number. This is usually four zeros. Once you have entered the PIN number, tap on Pair and iPhone will connect with your Bluetooth device. Once Bluetooth is connected, you can use it to stream media as well as make phone calls. While on a phone call, you will be prompted with these three options so you can select the exact mode you desire. At the top, your Bluetooth device will be listed, followed by the standard earpiece and speakerphone. If these options disappear, you can tap on the audio source icon, which will return the menu. When your Bluetooth is turned on, after having been off, it will automatically attempt to pair with the same device as before if it's in range. Tapping on the blue arrow will give you the option to forget the device if you don't want your iPhone to automatically try to connect to it. Turning Bluetooth off when you're not using it will conserve your battery life.